It is week 11 of D&D free daily content. We only got three days this week, though, and for whatever reason, it was Monday, Wednesday, Thursday. I thought it was going to be Monday, Wednesday, Friday, but whatever it is what it is. Most importantly, none of them are Adventure League modules. These are all DMs Guild created uh, modules, and they are all, in my opinion, very well done, and they cover a wide variety of different topics. So if you want to see what they are and my thoughts on them, stay tuned. You guys like my sweet D20 light? I think it's pretty, I think it's pretty cool. What's going on, folks? Ted from Nerd Immersion here. And for those of you who are asking about this light, um, and, and by the way, it does have the ampersand on the 20. Um, I will put a link in the description, an Amazon affiliate link, if you want to go pick one up yourself. It's like 35 bucks. Um, and it just runs off USB. Uh, anyway, let's jump over to uh, the D&D website. So you can see here on Monday, we got the Wild Sheep Chase and First Blush. So the Wild Sheep Chase here, you can see this is four and a half stars. So unfortunately, it's not even, it looks like it doesn't even have a medal, but it's four and a half stars for 263 uh, ratings, which means that's one of the highest rated uh, modules I think we've we've done in this whole series um, and there's only six pages and it's it's really interesting basically uh, you know I don't want to spoil too much about any of these in case you do decide to go play them but basically first thing is you encounter a sheep uh, that is not a sheep it's a wizard that got turned into a sheep and then you basically need to help the wizard get turned back into a person um, and it's designed to basically be a, uh, there's a lot of sheep puns in it as well, um, which, you know, I like puns, so that's always a good time. And uh, it's just, you know, three to six hours, one shot kind of session. You could bake it into a, you know, make it a one shot or bake it into your own game. Also on Monday, we got First Blush, which is right here. Four and a half stars, 74 ratings, best adamantine seller. That is something we do not see very often. And it's cool because it's this whole concept of a duet. Uh, and what you, what it means by a duet is one DM and one player. Uh, I've done a couple of these before. I did um, I did the Blood Hunter. Uh, that module was basically a duet format where it's one DM and one player. Um, it's a start your own duet, teleport your way out of the confines of a castle to an ancient mountainside cavern with a secret waiting just for you. First Blush is an inaugural adventure of a DD and d duet, bringing you high-quality, ready-to-play material focused on supporting adventuring parties of one player and one DM. So, it's a two- to four-hour uh, introductory adventure uh, for any setting. It has all the stat blocks that you'll need. It has ready-to-go battle maps and three ready-to-go player sheets complete with background information. Um, so, I did actually read through this entire adventure as well. And it's really cool because um, it's a great way to potentially get somebody into D&D &D if they're unfamiliar with it. And you're like, hey, I, I mean, I stand by that. I said the same thing for the Blood Hunter. But like, I think these ideas of one-on-one -on -one adventures for someone who's never played D&D &D before, because I've, tried, I've run games for people, several people who have never played D&D &D before. Uh, and I've, I've ran it from a group, a full group of people, like a table of four to like that player and one other person. And then I've also run a game for just one person and me as the DM. And I think people feel, you know, Dungeons and Dragons can be a potentially, um, I don't want to call it off-putting, but you can get nervous, right? There's a lot of, there was, there's stigma around it, less so now. Um, and people have things baked into their head about what they think Dungeons and Dragons is. And I feel like if you take the time to sit down with someone individually and play through the game with them that way, it will greatly help uh, them feel more comfortable to ask questions, to maybe want to dive into role play, whatever you want to do. But if there's somebody else there, specifically if there's somebody else there who's a veteran player, um, they may feel like they are not moving fast enough. They're asking too many questions. They're uncomfortable. And sometimes I've also seen this where like the veteran player thinks they're doing good, but basically they're just sort of parroting the character and just being like, oh, you should probably use, what do you have? Oh, you have Scorching Ray? Yeah, I'd probably use Scorching Ray. That'd be a good move. And then that person is just like, okay, I'll do that. But then they're not making any character decisions. They're not doing anything. They're just doing what someone else tells them to do. And that 
I feel like is is not fun for anybody. So that's what this is going to kind of break that concept of giving you a one on one adventure. And this is also designed. It doesn't matter what the class or the race is. So you can really just have them make whatever character they want. And then, you know, you can kind of walk them through it. Um, and it continues with second glance and then third times the charm. Um, so there's a whole trilogy of these adventures here and there's a whole bunch from these creators as well, but there's a three part adventure series to, you know, and I would highly recommend if you can do that with the same person, continue that, pro that, uh, that campaign. Then on Wednesday, we got secrets of Skyhorn lighthouse, which is another very popular one for see again, four and a half stars for 308 ratings. I guess maybe there's no metal because you don't have a metal if it's, if it's, you know, free. I guess if you put it up for zero dollars, you don't get a medal because you didn't sell it. Um, but to download it over 60,000 times, with, and now it's at 300, probably plus five star reviews. Uh, it was a five to seven hour adventure for level five characters. It does have a whole bunch of new monsters and stuff, and I read through this one as well. Uh, rumors of a rampaging sea monster have grounded ship traffic to a halt in the harbor. Characters discover the Jade Lion has gone missing from near Skyhorn Lighthouse and learn they must brave the open seas and cutthroat enemies in order to save the crew from a murky fate. Again, another one that I could easily adopt into uh, my own campaign if I wanted to. And I really like this concept of the eel folk. So, right, you've got like Lokathar fish people and Grunger frog people, Bullywogger frog people, lizard folk or lizard people. And this is eel folk. So they're basically a fish person, but they're like humanoid eels. I also would have really enjoyed if we could have gotten uh, an eel folk playable race in here too. It might've been a little bit out of place given the context of the adventure, but um, there's a cool bunch of sharks, uh, shark attacks and things like that. And there's a fantasy grounds version. So that's cool. We also got a Knight of Masks and Monsters by Ashley Warren. And I believe this is a, um, is this the one shot? No, uh, let's see. This is the best Electrum seller, four and a half stars for 86 ratings. DM Skill bestseller downloaded more than 9,500 times. In the city of Ibrido, I don't know, locals enjoy a life of splendor and frivolity. Oh, this is one where there's a, there's a big party, like a masquerade party every week. Um, and it has a whole bunch of secrets. And a strange hybrid creature, half bird, half man, is found brutally murdered in the city square. Uh, tattooed with the marquee symbol of two masks, rumors began to spread. So it's kind of like a who done it murder mystery. Uh, and there's even like special mask rules and stuff. It's a pretty cool one as well. This is like I said, this is a really solid set of adventures. This is one of the best weeks we've got, and it's funny because it's one of the best weeks we got. It's the shortest week we've gotten, and there's no adventure league into in it at all. Uh, then we got on Friday a chance encounter. Um, right here, which is a best gold seller, four and a half stars for 90 ratings. Classic low level adventure designed for a group of three to four first level players. It takes two to three hours to play through. First adventure in a mini series, uh, with the next adventure in the mini series being the Mystic Circle. And a couple of maps. Let's see. I think I did read through this one as well. Um, oh, this is this is the first level adventure. There's trying to find information from a wizard. There's a bunch of kobold encounters. Very good for a good intro adventure. And then lastly, Friday is the Executioner's Daughter, which is a solo adventure. And this is something I've been really wanting to do on the channel because there's a bunch of these out there and I've never done one. Um, this is a best platinum seller, four and a half stars for 75 ratings. Uh, it was nominated for an Emmy Award in 2019. Um, and basically what this is, is it's, just, it's essentially a choose your own adventure, right? So if you remember those books, choose your own adventure books, that's essentially what this is except it's a single D and D game. So you are both the player and the dungeon master in this game. So you basically go, you make your character, you play the game, uh, and then like things are annotated. And it's interesting because that's something I would really want to try because I've never done it. And it would be an interesting mind exercise to be like, I am the player. So I want to succeed, but I'm also the dungeon master. So I want to give myself a challenge. But like, obviously you could fudge the dice if you wanted, because you are both in control of both parties. But really, if you fudge the dice, you're only cheating yourself, right? I mean, like if I'm going to make an attack roll as the monster and I roll a natural 20 and I critically hit myself and I say it's not a natural 20, well, I, I know that it was. 
and then I kind of just cheated. I, I you know, I, I really want to try to do this. And I think that this would be a really interesting concept to do a stream of, of me playing or like, you know, stream myself going through a solo adventure. Um, and just, you know, cause it's basically, I could do this alone in my house by myself and I'd still have a good time. But I think with the input from the chat, that could also be really fun. Um, and that was it. That was the kind of the six modules we got throughout the week um, for week 11. Again, as things are starting to sort of turn back to normal a bit, uh, I'm wondering when we're going to get this thing to stop. Uh, I don't want it to stop. I'm enjoying free content every day. And like I said, I could always pick and choose adventures or modules or different things to cobble together, uh, you know, whether it be campaigns or encounters in a campaign. So I'm a big fan of this. Uh, I would like this to keep going, but things are starting. I mean, things are starting to open up, but then cases are spiking. So who knows anymore? Um, but yeah, that's that's week week 11 of free content. Let me know what your thoughts are. Did, did you pick up any of these this week? Have you had any of these in the past? And can you recommend other solo adventures that you think would be interesting? I know of a couple out there and I have some friends that are writing some other ones that I wouldn't mind adding into again to my own repertoire of things to play and i think it also could be cool if i make a character like roll the character live on the stream then play through one of these and basically see if i can get like a, almost a whole campaign going of just playing this solo character through and then i think that also could be a fun thing for the folks to see on the stream because then like it's oh like we're watching this character evolve as we go and i think that that could be really fun um i don't know let me know your thoughts in the comments down below uh, thank you all so much for watching. A big thank you to my patrons over on Patreon for continuing to support the channel. As of me recording this video, we are just under 500 subscribers away from 40,000 subscribers here on YouTube. So I would love to take this moment to just say if you haven't subscribed to the channel and you like what I do here, I would greatly appreciate it if you subscribed to the channel. Again, that really doesn't do anything other than driving the numbers up. It doesn't equate to direct you know, compensation in any way if that's a thing that you're worried about. Um, but yeah, I, I, you know, I was trying to hit 50,000 by my birthday on July 12th. If we hit 40,000, then it's just that we have a, we have a target. It's 10 K in a little less than a month. Is that possible? Pretty unlikely, but you know, maybe everyone will surprise me and we'll just blow that out of the water. I don't know. So thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you next time.